Hey guys, how's it going? Jason Sensational here. Welcome back to the channel for another week of Lineup Academy. Uh, we missed a week last week because RA was on hold for the new patch, but now we've had a week from the patch, and it's honestly kind of cool seeing how the meta has sort of changed and what new decks have kind of come into the meta. So I just want to talk a little bit about my lineup going to this week, what the expectations were, um, and things like that. We'll talk about my decks, talk about the two rounds in my opponent's decks, how the matches went, and the overall expected outcome. But if you guys are unfamiliar with the series, this is a series that is following me and my team, but mostly my lineups throughout the Aegis Esports and Terra Academy team league, where I am playing with Majin Bay, um, Jason Florent, as well as Kever, and this is just a peek of my lineups and my matches. But before I jump too too much into the decks, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I was or what rather what we were expecting going into this week and what my lineup overall aims to do, just so you have a general idea when I'm talking about the three different decks. So this week in particular, or rather I guess the weeks leading up to this week, and what I think most of us are expecting going into seasonals is that decks like Pantheon as well as the Ziggs Talia deck are going to be very powerful. Just these two general um, powerful mid-range decks that do well into other mid-range decks and do well into control I think are big targets as well as just generally powerful decks and the overall goal of my lineup was to build a sort of similar lineup to that. And the ideal goal here is to play three powerful decks that I think have good spreads across other mid-range decks, namely also Pantheon as well as Zixtalia, and having good game into control. And when we're looking over these three decks, I just want you to think about, keep, about keeping that in mind and just think about how these will fit into those categories. So when we're starting off with Draven Rumble Scion, um, this, is, this is actually a cool deck that my friend Ikeda, you guys might know him, built. This definitely focuses, this focuses on having Rumble as a very powerful mid-game threat, having a spell shield enables it to survive into a lot of more situations, especially when you compare with Might to push a lot of damage early on. Even though it is Rumble and not Draven Scion, as we only have one copy of Draven, we still have the ability to tutor him with the Draven's biggest fan, so we can still have a Draven on turn 3 if needed. But overall, this deck still remains very similar to any sort of Rumble, Scion, Draven, Rumble, Draven, Scion build that focuses on having the ability to push a lot of early game damage with either the Fearsome keyword from Risen Rider or the Flame Chompers from Boon Baboon. Because we can go so wide so early on in ways that really not a lot of decks can really handle with, um, because we have challengers from the Flame Chompers, we have the Fearsome from the Riz Fallen Rider, we have the burst capabilities of generating a Reborn Grenadier onto the field. It's just a very powerful way of sneaking a lot of units through early on. And when we're talking about again, playing against a deck like Pantheon or Talia Ziggs, that's exactly how you want to be treating that matchup, and that's also why a lot of aggro decks do very well into those two specific decks. It is because they can go 5 to 6 wide, attacking on turn 3, turn 4, and being able to push like 10 or so damage in that turn, and then finishing the game with burn. And as you can see, we have 3 copies of Get Excited, we have 3 copies of Mystic Shot. Those are going face in the matchups where we're just absolutely rushing down our opponent. Even though we have a very aggressive game plan available to us, we also have a very mid-range game plan available to us as well. I talked a little bit about Rumble just being an absolute threat to a lot of other decks because you just really can't block him very well, you can't really interact with him very well, and if he ever levels you just start generating extra value for your mid-range engine. Having cards like Might and Survival Skills, two of the strongest I think anti-mid-range sort of cards within Noxus, apart from maybe like Flock as well, but Whirling Death and Survival Skills just help us gain those extra value trades. Being able to trade 3 mana for like a I don't know, a 5 mana unit or something like that is really, really big, especially when you can attach it onto cards like Rumble that already have Spell Shield and it's very hard to, again, interact with that during combat. Or we can just stick a Whirling Death onto a Scion, which also is just very, very difficult for our opponents to remove, and even if they do remove it, suddenly you're just rallying on the offswing. 
And for the slower grinder control games, we also do have Lost Soul, which is just an infinite value engine, so to speak, and Captain Farron to provide us a little bit more pressure and burn for the late game. Overall, just a very flexible deck. It can play very fast and it can play for a drawn out value game, so long as you do draw Scion. If there are hands where you don't draw Scion, then some control decks do have the room to take over the game and push the advantage before you can find your Scion. But overall, just a very powerful deck, and I can think can fit into this general lineup where you want to be good into just general mid range decks, but also be good into a wide category of decks as well. And I don't know if we can talk about a strong <laughs> mid range lineup without talking about Yumi Pantheon. I think this is a given to a lot of people, and I also talked about myself where I think a lot of people are expecting to play against it or maybe to even play it themselves because it is just that powerful of a deck. As a mid-range deck, we have the capability to outscale pretty much any other deck in existence. Saga Seeker, Wounded White Flame, and Pantheon, all having the faded keyword, allows them to grow turn after turn, and also having Yumi allows us to just build and turbo stat, turbo stat boost just a unit that we can play on curve. Now, compared to other mid-range decks that, you know, just get chump blocked out in the mid-game, having access to Zenith Blade, one of the best deck cards in this deck, allows us to just really apply the pressure to our opponent because we're scaling our units so heavily with Faded, with Yumi. This Zenith Blade alone can just suddenly start applying pressure and closing the game out in 2-3 to three attack turns. In conjunction with Cataclysm, we really are putting a clock to our opponent and just threatening to end the game there. Bunch of draw cards, bunch of value cards, bunch of protection tools, but also just big statted units combined with efficient Demacia removal. This makes this deck a very big threat into other mid range decks. Even into more control centric decks, you know, the ones running Vengeances and Ruination, the ability to level Yumi and gain an infinite spell shield generator is actually a very, very big threat to a lot of these decks. Pantheon himself can also just roll spell shield when leveled up. And we do have a copy of Bastion, one Aegis, as well as two Cataclysms to catch our opponent off guard if they ever try to tap under with unit mana. So, very powerful deck overall. Again, sort of loses to aggro a little bit, but overall beating up the mid-range and beating up control. And then finally, for the third deck, we have uh, my favorite deck. This is Yasuo Leona. This is the deck that you guys have seen on the channel quite a few times before. and. Luckily enough, it actually fits into this general idea of what I want to be doing and beating up on the mid-range decks. I'm comfortable playing to Pantheon, I can beat Talia Ziggs, I can beat Viego, I can beat a lot of board-based decks because I have the ability to stun lock all my opponent's board. When your opponent's deck is reliant on having a board or a lot of their power comes from just having units, um, being able to stun them out or being able to stall out the game because suddenly they're just not attacking anymore, is just definitely a very good answer to a lot of these decks. Having the access to deny also means that against control decks or field the rush, they can't really play their power bombs or they can't play their big removal cards when I am developing into my turns. Now, the cool thing about this, because this is a deck that I have tailored for myself, this is a deck that I have played countless times. For you, this might not be your third deck in the lineup, so to speak. Um, but the cool thing about this lineup is, again, the fact that the general idea is very flexible. All you need to do is be comfortable playing into Pantheon and Talia Ziggs, albeit those are pretty powerful decks. But if you have a third deck that you think is very good in that category, has a good game into control, then you can slot that into this lineup. Even something like Aphelios decks, um, Kindred Viego, um, even like Monoshrima potentially, just very, or even Talia Ziggs of your own. Just very powerful mid-range decks that fall into the category. You just want to make sure that you're beating up on smaller mid-range decks, having game into Pantheon and Talia Ziggs, and having game into Control. So that's the lineup of mine wrapped up in a bundle. With that out of the way, let's jump into the first round, and we'll talk about my first opponent's lineup and bans from there. So for the first round, we are playing up against Rip Gripper. And he brought a rather interesting deck, or rather interesting lineup, sorry. He's bringing Nami TF, this is the TF Biz throwback, the elusive beatdown pile with Nami just scaling cards like Werblefish and Shelly, and just otherwise just scales units, Portal Cannon, things like that. 
The second deck here is Fizz Riven, the combo deck with Fizz, with Ruin Reckoner, with Papercraft Dragon. Just an elusive, another pseudo elusive beatdown deck, but definitely a few more actual land units within there. Just another sort of combo y all in deck. And then the third deck is deep, which is interesting because I <laughs> I don't want to... Uh, you're not expecting deep in these kind of scenarios, but just pretty classic standard deep with a few extra control tools and maybe some other lists do run. But this is kind of interesting because between the three decks, I generally speaking have no idea about these matchup tables. Um, it's, 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 it's interesting because I'm going into this ban with very little information. Now, I can begin to make some educated assumptions. I know strategies like Pantheon are good into Nami TF because they can't deal with my units and I can generally rush them down. Same with Fizz Riven. Um, I think that generally the same strategy holds true. I do have Sharp Sights for Fizz. I have Sharp Sights for Lucid. I have single combats. My units outscale. And with Scion, I think into the same with Scion into the three decks. I think that I'm able to go wide. I'm able to use, push damage very aggressively. These decks don't really have good removal for that in the early game, and then I get to close out the game with burn. I can generally be the aggressor with either my Pantheon deck or my Draven Scion deck, or my Scion uh, Rumble deck into all three of these decks. Uh, deep is the one I'm least sure of, but I think I just really can't respect deep enough to give it too much consideration. It's definitely not getting banned, but I think Pantheon and Scion, generally speaking, are going to do decent into deep as well. So I know he's going to ban either my Pantheon or my Scion list, and I, regardless of what he bans, I feel comfortable playing the other deck into his lineup. So that leaves me with this problem of which deck am I banning, and the way to sort of look at this is I need to win with my Yasuo Leona deck. Um, and it's which one of these three decks do I think is the worst for that deck because I feel confident with my matchups with the other two decks. Now, when I look at his three decks, I, I can't ban deep, I just don't respect it enough. I look at Fizz Riven, it's, it's difficult because I can't interact with Fizz at all. If I try to concuss upon Fizz, all he has to do is like slap an Elixir of Wrath on top of it, and suddenly he fizzles my concussive palm. You don't have to develop into like, you don't have to develop into like Sunhawk or Leon with this deck. You can just slap a lot of burst spells, you, you can use like the, uh, Blade Fragments, and Ruin Reckoner himself doesn't even really care about stuns because you can still start a free attack with a stun unit. But when I look at this deck, and if it doesn't draw exactly Fizz, I don't think there's too much of a threat to it. Besides the Scholarly Climber that does have Spell Shield on it, I don't think there's much of a problem because if you try to go all in on Riven, I do have Concussive Palm now to stop you. You have Friendship, which can give Spell Shield, and that's a little bit annoying, but having to keep up 4 mana in response to, you know, 4 mana of mine is a lot less efficient than simply just slapping an Elixir of Wrath onto Fizz. So, if they don't draw exactly Fizz, I feel decently confident into this matchup. Whereas, against Nami TF, they have a lot more looses I just really can't deal with. They go a lot wider, and they can just really turbo buff up their board and units without needing to give me an action. So when I'm considering against these three decks, I think the worst matchup for my Yasuo Leona, which is the deck that I need to get a win with through this, is the Nami Twisted Fate deck, and so that's the one that's going to eat the ban. So with that in mind, I am going to ban Nami TF, let's see what he bans, and then we'll take the games from there. And I suspect he bans Pantheon. Oh, okay. Interesting. It was, it was either one of these two. I think maybe he thinks that like the deep can beat the Pantheon, which wouldn't necessarily be like a poor assumption. I don't even know the match against deep. But I think like against the Fizz Riven deck, I should be fine. It's not like draw sharp sight for his uh, Fizz. If I lose this one, it might be kind of weird. I need to win this one. Mm. Saga Seeker, Saga Seeker, please. Oh dear lord. 
this is the only thing I dislike about Pantheon. If I don't draw like either Saga Seeker or a White Flame, please White Flame. White Flame just absolutely saves me here. We're so good at the game. Vengeance? Okay. But we're so good at the game. Oh my god, it's absolutely insane how good at the game we are. Oh my god, double lure. Oh, he's a gamer too. Holy moly. God, he's gaming so hard. I'm scared of you. He's gaming so hard right now. Concerted is beautiful. Nice pickup. Oh my god! Third lure! Oh my god. If we don't if we don't beat him for turn seven, we lose. So <laughs> we're on a little bit of a tight clock here. We'll see. We need to rub we need to bum rush this guy down, holy moly. Third lure of the death. What in the world? So sea monsters cost three less. I cost two. Devour costs three. Vile feast. I can sharp sight. He's pretty much forced to block here, right? right. Really good draw. If I find a Zenith Blade, I also win, but at this point, I feel very confident. Like, I have Bastion again. <sighs> so good at the game! Concerted Strike for Devour, Bastion for Vengeance. I don't really see how we lose from this spot. Having 8 mana. Mm, 8 mana is a little bit difficult, but he's not deep, so his like, Devour does nothing. <laughs> okay, so we just Zenith into having Bastion. He plays Devour now, he can't play Vengeance anymore. <laughs> he could like Vile Vengeance, that's probably like, a little bit scary. But we're flipping Pantheon next turn. Ship right. I want to buff up my panther a little bit more. I don't want to like randomly just like bone skier this way though. Next turn seven, right? He's not deep. He's quite far from deep. He needs double Yedison. Yedison, sorry. Okay. I'm gonna like prevent myself from randomly getting bone skiered here. Okay, I can take seven. It's no issue. One Jettis. Field Breaker. Really? He burned the skewer, right? So if he like skewers right away. That's a little bit annoying. I don't think he can skewer into another single combat though. I am on three. I don't think he can reasonably get away with single combating. It's just so risky. I can't even sharp sight. Never mind. I'm 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 safe against the skewer. So I can sharp sight. It's fine. I just get my faded proc here. And then I can open with the sharp sight, see what my level hits. This switches is three. Well, this is lethal. Okay. And we have lethal, and then we have fashion tail. Like, if he has vengeance, whatever. The issue is if he has skewer. There's a vengeance. 
I guess the issue is if he also has like uh Alfies. I mean we have two more pantheons. But the issue is when he plays Nautilus and goes deep, we lose. Should we have concerted it instead? I guess we're not winning. Oh, okay, nice. Oof. It's actually kinda scary. The triple what was really scary is it just the triple um triple lure. Like once he played Nautilus and went deep, we were just losing. Thank god we got there. That was scary. <laughs> Alright, Yasuo. Or I mean Leona. I mean Yasuo. I mean both of you guys. Oh, goaded him. Actually, it's okay. I need a Sunhawk or like a Priestess here. I see one more early daybreak. When I get a Prismatic Leona, Prismatic Leona looks kind of hot, not gonna lie. Oh, good draw. How many lures you got this time, buddy? Ooh, Mina's not bad. One lure? You have a second lure? Second lure is probably just like too low tempo there, honestly. I don't know if you can get away with that. So I'm stunning with the Leona into my attack. Comet or Nautilus. Need to be a little bit careful of vengeance. Like vengeance onto Leona Raven is actually quite bad for us. Losing a vengeance here. I don't love to see that, but I don't really see the punish there either. Like he's gonna skewer like this into me later. I don't know. Like a jaw hunter is a little bit scary. I don't want Sluna to die. I don't want to palm like a jaw hunter either. Can't realistically like devour into like the wind. Okay, that's fine. I know we'll get here, they might just be dead next turn. Losing a skewer. So they're down a skewer, they're down a vengeance. farther from deep five so it's like a single jettison doesn't do it so they can't go deep this turn without spending at least four mana or five mana rather and then they have what nothing it's so greedy yeah that's really annoying if we palm here are we winning no i mean deny you I'm not a huge fan of this deny Hmm. Then it makes my attacks awkward. If I play Morning's Light, I don't get anything out of it. Okay, I'll have to slow down the game slightly. I don't. I, I hate having to deny here, but. Reason to not attack with Leona back in turn 3 or turn 4. This is like the punish. I have to burn a deny here. Whereas I'll probably win the game if I just pass the Morning Light here. That's probably a mistake on my part. There's a jettison. It's going deep next turn. I have an attack. I can attack here. It's free, I guess. Okay. 
So if he plays Nautilus, I have the Comet, and I don't know if he'll have a Skewer. If he gets like Mino, we also win. I can take the 6, that's fine. Okay, it's also fine. There's Atrocity, so I need to be careful about that. I just can't let him like stick Nautilus. If he plays Nautilus, he just has to get vomited. Yep. The issue here is if he has Skewer, but then... Hmm, it's tough. If he has Skewer, it's really rough. He already burned one. Oh, top deck Skewer down. That's really brutal. That's actually really brutal. Sunhawk into Comet. Doesn't push us any damage. Well, Sunhawk now, Comet this turn, next turn Mina, and then win the game, right? Like, he's still pretty forced to play Nautilus, we'll Comet it. If he plays Nautilus next turn, we win off of Mina. Oh, it's not Nautilus, interesting. Is he dead? We just like double concuss upon? Saving Morning's Light, we stun this. We have... 6, 12, versus we double concuss at home, we have... Um, uh, math is hard. Um, the We have 5, 7, 5, 11, 16 exactsies. He needs exactly a scarab here, otherwise he loses. I guess Vile Feast. Vile Feast would make him survive, but then like Mina finishes him the next turn. Like he can't ever play Nautilus again after the Mina. Save. So he survives at... Oh he's not dead. Oh am I saying? Damn. Oh I'm really bad at math. Holy moly. But like, again, this Mina just absolutely ends his game. He just can't play Nautilus. I kind of dare him to play Nautilus. I would love for him to play Nautilus. Can that work? Hmm, what do I do here? He's cost four. I'm losing to Atrocity. Sucks. Hate losing to Atrocity. I can send you back, and then I just send you and you back. He replays one in Morning's Light, and I win. Mm. This sucks. I have to block, huh? If I send you back, you can't play it. I send two of you back. You play one. I'm forced to block down. That sucks. This is slightly worse than I would have hoped for. If I send you back, you just eat my Sunhawk, and that's no bueno. Wow. I think that was so good. I think he realized very well that he couldn't play Nautilus. That was just very good thinking on his side. Or he just might not have any sea creatures either. But now I'm like losing atrocity because of the Abyssal Eye. Kinda suck. Your attack is obvious. You cannot win. Yeah, this sucks.
Oh, Hush is so good. Hush is so good, because I beat the Frosty, you know? Except for these, right? These are 5-5? Five five? Yeah. Mm, okay, never mind, I don't beat Atrocity. Wait, is this even correct here? I only stunned- Wait, I only stunned one. Oh my god, what a disaster. Oh god. How do I stun more? Oh, that was bad. Hmm. Now I'm losing a Nautilus. I thought I was stunning like two. Oh, that was so bad. Oh, that was really bad. None of these trade. Oh, that was so bad. Ugh. Him hitting this was just insane. Ew. I just calculated. So I should have played Yasuo first to get the kill. That was bad. That was really bad. The double palm play was maybe greedy, because like I could have saved those for Yasuo, stunned the elusive, not put myself in this dying spot. I can just like slam Nautilus down now and I lose. Most likely. I wasn't even playing Nautilus. Why does he not play Nautilus? Can't even kill this with the Memphis. So mm, I shouldn't have blocked with the Leon or I shouldn't attack with Leon on turn four. That was a bad play. And he also had to have his like skewer. Like I was pretty lucky of him as well. I don't even have enough fears and blockers. Like, if I flash you, I still can't even kill you. Um, that's an issue. I'm still losing atrocity. I need to draw Leona first. Alright, I did not draw Leona. Split on turn four when I attack with Leona. That was just like bad of me. I should not have attacked Leona on turn four. Because then I didn't have to use the deny and I could have like Leona would survive, I wouldn't have to use deny there. That was bad. Damn. Should have won that one. This one is going to be tough. I need to really pressure him out first. Attack on odds is awkward. Somewhat. Maybe it's good. For Too slow. So I need to find Leona here and then like a morning light and I'm good. He doesn't have Fizz, I'm also in a fine spot. He has Fizz, it's gonna be awkward. Okay. 
attack now because of Riven. It's a really good draw. Pretty pass. He plays Riven with Sunhawk. I'd rather Sunhawk on defensive if I can. We just need a Leona here. Oh no, Riven. Beautiful. Yeah, we've seen Riven here. His hand right now seems really bricked. Unless he hits like the scholarly climber. That card is rather annoying. Elusive blocker. Doesn't really matter. We can play this next turn. We can play this next turn. We play this. Um. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Like scholarly block would be the most annoying, but he can't even might it next turn. So even if he has it, I'm not that scared. And then the rest of his hand right now doesn't seem that good. Right. Just need to find Leona, please. Not quite. Long chill. I don't need to stun that here. I don't even mind trading for the Yasuo. Like what, he has to like, flame spitter it? I don't want to trade for the Yasuo here. But if he plays like a Fizz and I get to stun the Fizz, it dies. I really want to just sack the Yasuo here. Mm. I can kill it next turn with the Sun Hawk. Giving it might, it means he draws. Uh, I don't know. It's tough. I, I should have just traded off. You know, like I just should have just traded there. At least in my opinion, I should have traded it. So here's a question like, do I just Sunhawk kill it or do I play Rav? Kind of has to be Rav, right? All right, Leona, I need you. I need you, girl. I got an attack here. That's so, like... I don't have a palm. I don't have a way to punish. It's so sad. Like, if he has another might, I can't punish. Like, he got a friendship. He can friendship might, right? Might just be dead here. Like, friendship mites me. I can hush might away. Okay, that's fine. No, no, we're fine, we're fine. Because, like, if he mites, we can just hush. And then we... Oh. What? Huh? I mean, that's so bad. What? Are right, he's dead. <laughs> what? Nah, nah, nah. What was that? Oh, man. I don't... I don't believe that one. I don't believe what the hell just happened. What? How do you how do you make that open attack without a might? Oh my god, what was that? <laughs> no, Leona has still made this like kind of awkward. I know his hand sucks, but. That doesn't give me enough information about how I could be playing this out the best. Like, I could, like, hush stun, but then I'd have to be pushing lethal here. And I don't think I am quite yet. I can trade off a Rav. This is good, because Spell Shield is so annoying. I have hush, I don't think I can lose. You have to, like, recommit friendship. But he didn't have might friendship last turn. It's fine. Like, that's just a lot of burn potential. I don't need these guys without Leon. It's just kind of pointless. Back to 20. I have Hush. He needs to open pre commit friendships. He only has two blade fragments. If he develops, I have stun. I have stun. Then I have Mina next.
Yeah, we got kind of lucky. You didn't have Fizz. Like, if you drew Fizz, we would just probably, like, lost. Hey, he wants to protect it? Wow, that's that's a mana commitment. <laughs> Let us take a peek at life beneath the waves. Yep, you got it. Our strength is forever at its zenith. Mm. Ooh, that's cute. <laughs> that's really cute. And this should be GG. We have a no file, we have a hush. He like friendship something? Double friendship? Oh, Yordle portal. Cute. Three blockers, five attackers, two health. Seems good. We're pushing seven at the minimum. Even if he fervored him, he'd still be dying. Wait a second. He had ribbon earlier, but didn't play it. Alright. GG's, buddy. Jasso versus Deep? Yeah, that's like a... That's like a what? That's a 2021 kind of... 2021? Wait... No, 2020 matchup. God, I, I forget it's almost been like two years, huh? So I like to say the matchups went decently how I expected to. The Pantheon deck got a win into the Deep one. The Yasuo one lost the Deep, unfortunately. He was able to pick up the treasure that summoned three eight eights, and that was a little bit too powerful because I was sort of lock him out of playing Nautilus. And if he ever played Nautilus there, he would have lost. He top decked the bones here, which is a little bit unfortunate. But as I predicted into the Fizz Riven deck, when he didn't draw Fizz, he really didn't have enough pressure or enough sort of cards that could stop the onslaught of stuns that was going against him. He couldn't really go in, and I think his hand was a little bit awkward overall. But I got the win into this deck and generally won 2 1 into Gripper. Alright, so for our second round opponent, he brought something slightly more conventional, but still uh, had some interesting decks within there. The first deck here is Ziggs Talia, definitely one of the decks that we as a team expected going into the week. And generally speaking, I feel pretty comfortable playing into Ziggs Talia with all three of my decks. So, relatively happy to see it. Um, still a little bit unsure how it'll pan out because I haven't really played into the matchup too much, but overall I feel confident playing into this deck because it is a deck that I was prepared to play into. The second deck is Viego Kindred. Slightly a little bit more awkward because into the Pantheon deck. Um, generally speaking, the Viego Kindred deck does pretty okay, but because this version has very few ways of procking Kindred by itself, there's only one Spirit Leech, me and Kevr played this matchup a lot the other day and found out that the Kindred often or not wasn't really doing enough and you can generally speaking race them if you have enough interaction, you can really just beat down on this deck. So it was a little bit interesting um, to see if I needed to ban this deck going into the round. But for the third deck is something quite interesting, they brought Ash LeBlanc. And I think their lineup overall at least wanted to feel comfortable playing into Pantheon, the Viego deck. 
does okay into, uh, does like pretty well into Pantheon, the Ash LeBlanc deck, definitely a deck that's trying to target Pantheon. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting, because I know he's wanting to play against Pantheon, which means he is for sure going to ban a Scion, unless he respects Yasuo too much for some reason, I don't think that'll ever be the case. But I have a very good read that he is going into this matchup banning Scion. And with that information, I can make a slightly more educated ban because there's a little bit of issue for my Pantheon deck, right? Because into Kindred Viego, it's questionable, but into Ash LeBlanc, it's even worse. It's very tough to play into Ash LeBlanc with the Pantheon deck. And because I know he wants to play into Pantheon and he's banning my Scion based off of what his lineup is trying to do, I think the best ban for me is the Ash LeBlanc deck. And I think it actually does decently well into my Yasuo deck as well. So I think overall, banning Ash LeBlanc is the best choice for me. And if I need to play the Pantheon into this Kindred Viego, from the testing that we did a little bit the night before, I still feel relatively comfortable playing Pantheon into this list. So the ban here is decided because he brought the line of targeting Pantheon. I know he's not going to ban Pantheon. Now, if I was thinking he was going to ban Pantheon, um, and letting me play Scion, then I would have left this matchup up and then banned this one, because this one actually does pretty well into Scion, having the Will and the Concussive Palm, and generally speaking, like cards like Vile Feast to slow things down a lot. Um, I could leave this up because... Sorry, it, the case where if he would have banned Pantheon, because, not sure why, but hypothetically, if I knew he was banning Pantheon, I would have made the decision to ban Viego Kindred because I think this deck does a lot better into my Scion. And Scion should crush Ash the Wall. So that's the general thinking when going into this one. Because I knew he had a target onto Pantheon, I can make an educated ban decision there. And I think overall it did me pretty well. So let's jump into the games and see how they went as far as things go. See, so yeah, guarantee ban Scion. I knew it. Cool, sick. Our goal here is like, so this one's like a little bit tough, but me and Kai were screaming this yesterday, and it feels okay. Our main goal is just to 2 0 Tulia Zig. I can broadwing Pantheon, that doesn't seem fantastic. Let's see, this one looks dead standard, only one Desert Naturalist. Tan though is garbage. So only one Desert Naturalist. Two quicksands, two denies, three hourglass. I think this is a matchup where hourglass doesn't actually matter that much. Oh my god, this hand sucks. Wow, this hand is so bad. Oh no. Saga Seeker, save me! Okay, white flame is okay. We might just like Zenith wait on turn 3. Like we don't need to draw the that third Zenith. Rockhopper is kind of annoying. So we can't ride up Arcane which is good. It's a good draw. We'll just slap the Zenith wait onto it now. Like we have a second Zenith, we don't need to like draw the third one. Okay. And then we'll just like put Yumi on it and just try to win off of the sky alone. Back here. It's not a bad draw. I think this guy's just carrying us by itself. How does he ever kill this? We have a Cataclysm, we're able to push big boy damages. I think he was like trying to ride a Varkale. Oh my god, this is so sad. Uh, okay, so we need to make sure we just don't like randomly die by him going too wide. He will have quicksands. We do need to be careful of those. But outside of that, we can just apply the pressure. Ain vest is a good draw. I don't want to say the scope phase. 
I mean, if he doesn't quicksand this, I could care less. Interesting. Okay. I mean, we might just like that Cataclysm for lethal. If he ever taps under 3 mana, 2 mana, I don't know, that was totally fine. I'll save this a heal face just in case. This turn I might just like develop Bright Seal, like this is never dying, so that's never an issue. Oh no, you would you would never cut Zenith Blade. Zenith Blade's your best card in the deck. Almost. It's the best spell in your deck. Hmm, yes, that is true. It is the best spell in your deck. If he plays Talia, he just loses the game. How funny is that? Like he really wants to play Talia. <laughs> oh, this game is so good. Wow. Is this turn five? Turn five lethal, guys. How disgusting. Oh my god, this game is so dumb. Wow, Pantheon is such a dumb deck. Oh my god. Played four cards? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. God, Pantheon is just not okay. Someone banned this deck already. Okay, I have no idea how this matchup works. I think this is not good for us. Raven is good. What is he running? Um, nothing really. I want to know why. Raven is fine. This is actually pretty decent. This is actually a really good card. It's a one of. I might just keep. Ooh, good hand, good hand. Very, very good hand. Oh my god. Okay, this hand is cracked. Hand is actually cracked. I think we're gonna steamroll him here. We we do have this. We're gonna pressure his mana a lot. If he tries a vengeance, we can like homecoming as like a like a like a got him type of moment. When discipline means like his kindred should realistically never get to slay that easily. Oh wow, he's spending two mana at the limbs. Wow, that's so expensive. Wow. Okay, I think we're a really good spot here. We're a really really good spot. This is a really good hand. Oh my god, what a draw. We're so good at the game. Oh my god, we're absolutely cracked. Like he, what, he plays Indrid here? Okay, that's pretty good. He's dead on turn 7, ideally speaking. Did he draw Morning's Light? Not quite. Still most likely dying on turn 7. We'll see if we can do it. We get a homecoming that at some point. Like, we get to pressure him so much at next turn that he'll tap under deny almost certainly, and then we can homecoming Viego if we need to. Like, I don't really see a way out of it for him. He can't attack with anything here besides Viego. He could, like, swing with Viego. We'd have to take 7. Oh my god, we hit a Sunhawk? What? Oh my god, we're so good at the game! Oh my god, what is this? Raven created Sunhawk, Jesus Christ. Wow, we're so good at the game. We're like insane at the game, it's not even fair. It's not even close. I think he's dead. Oh, this is such a smart attack, I love it. I love this attack. Good for him. Identifying that he could attack with Viego there is definitely correct. But I don't think it's gonna matter. Raise your weapon, he might have needed to start with the Sunhawk first. I don't know, we'll see.
Imagine we concussive palms. He's gonna lose the game. Concussive's Leon, okay. I guess we're not pushing lethal quite yet. We just stun his whole board though. If he tops under deny here, we can like get his Viego. I willed for homecoming. Close are we? 8, 10, 14. Apparently. Alright, smart play. So we're gonna attack in here and then we'll just Will of Ionia or Homecoming Viego. smart play it's so like such a heads up like player understand that the sunhawks are the most important card here i don't know i think this is like like really good game sense for maybe the first time playing into this deck like it's so insane like he understands that his health total is not the most important thing, but like killing the Sunhawks are. Like it takes such a high level of like gamer sense to understand that. So incredible. This deck do find in ranked? I'm gonna hit 500 LP with it. Or at least I'm gonna try to. If this deck can just slap Viego Ionia, oh man. This deck is like trampling. I did I did like ultra high roll this game though. Like this game was a fat, fat high roll. How much LP? I'm at like 330. Cause now like he's like, can I still play Viego? But I do have to block Viego right now. No one no I don't. I just like play a I'm just gonna play this. This is unfortunate because I want to nightfall it. I'm gonna save. No, I just still just play it now. Oh, that's not bad. So here I can just take pod, and the next one can like sunhawk plus something. So the question is, do I take fast or do I take slow? I don't think I want to take morning slide because of deny. Like the one way I can lose the game. I could also just play like either horrock into like sunhawk. Also considerable. I think I just take fast here. Try a nightfall, you get two cards, yeah. But in this case, I just need a daybreak card to stun Viego. Because like I know I can't block Viego here, and then I don't want to lose atrocity. So unfortunately I had a daybreak that card there. It's really unfortunate because I lost like a daybreak card. But like being able to chain daybreaks is so important. Good draw. Like I really want a daybreak card out of that. But I I could have like twinned maybe to like block Viego or I twin just to activate the nightfall. Well that's like kind of expensive. Not expensive mana wise, just resource wise. And here I have another stun. Vengeance at this point is losing. You can't vengeance here. 
He already used his uh, Spirit Leech. So, like, he already used two Camo War Soldiers as well. Okay, it's fine. Just give me four space. I just like play another sh like a Daybreak card. Something just getting really pressured for mana. Currently dying. Say so he has Vengeance, he blocks two, and then I still deal nine. No, seven, nine. So Vengeance is losing. Uh, Concussive Palm is block, block, block. Three. So you could have Concussive Palm. But then I can like... Let's see. So let's say he Concussive Palms me. Attack like this. He Palms 5, blocks 5, blocks 3. So... He block, block, block. Take 2, take 4. It's not enough. Palm. Oh. Interesting. Oh. Huh. If he had Palm, he would have played it, right? I don't feel like he has Palm here. like Spirit's Refuge to heal 2 and then dead to Doom Beast. He has a Palm I got punished. Some one off. Ugh, I got punished there. Whoops. Mm. Oh, maybe I should have let it through. Oh, I don't know. That was tough. Like, he'd have to deny this. Yeah, I should have let it through because he'd be forced to deny this. That was silly. Mm, that was not the cleanest play, I will have to admit. Damn, that was silly. I should have just let it through, because like, he'd be forced to deny this, which I should be very happy of. I don't know how he's winning still, but that was, that was unfortunate. I should- ah, uh, that was a misplay. That might cost me, we'll see. As long as this Viego doesn't level up though, I don't really care. Elusive from this too. What do these yodel eyes see? Should be no no more punishes for an open attack here. Actually, like considerable, but I'm not sure. Like, I he he's so dead here, right? Maybe he's not dead. I don't know. I screw up again. Ugh! Now I'm losing the deny. I feel like I'm messing up over and over.
I should no, I should have developed every time. There's no reason to open tack here. Oh, uh, cause now I'm, mm, I might regret this. I might really regret this. I'm losing a deny here. I should not be in the spot, but alas, here I am, being an idiot. I'm just an idiot. That's all there is. Three denies for sure has on here. I'm actually just an idiot. God, I'm throwing. I lost the loose. Oh my god. Okay. Just calm down, buddy. You're better than this stupid throwing gamer. You are better than this. Lost all my Sunhawks. Okay, 15 out of 5 stuns. Pretty okay. Alright, you clean up with Yasuo. I don't lose Atrocity because I have Yasuo Palm. Unless the Atrocity is right now on stack. But then I can double Concussive Palm. Does that? Do I care? I don't know if I care quite. I won this game, but now I'm losing potentially. Oh, because he could play new VA going to die to Atrocity. Am I in the right mindset? I have no freaking idea. Jesus Christ, I'm like actually trolling. I don't know. I'm actually losing to Atrocity now with Viego. I feel like this game would be doing so much better, but I'm kind of just being an idiot. I'm losing to uh, I'm losing to atrocity. I'm so bad at this game. I should have won this game two times over. Why is this Viego almost level? I win? Question mark. That was a lucky draw. Oh, wow. All right. <sighs> Not the cleanest. We got bailed out with a top deck. Should have won like three times. Hmm. Oh. We got a little bit more learning to do. So as I suspected, he did end up banning the Scion, which I think definitely made sense from both sides. And I was able to just absolutely crush Zixalia with the turn 5, 4 cards played, Pantheon deck. Um, the Yasuo into the Viego, I think, was actually a phenomenal game. I think I played 
I, I was very ahead for the most part, and then I was at the end, I, was, I started to throw a little bit, where I made a few bad plays, and then ultimately I had to get bailed out by the top deck. But overall, I, I wasn't sure about the matchup, but it generally surprised me that it seemed pretty decent to me. So very happy with the overall perception of that matchup. I just misplayed a few times where I should develop more, I shouldn't have committed like a twin, things like that. That I can learn a little bit more, but very happy overall that I know I have a chance against Diego Kindred as the Yasuo Leona player. So overall, a sort of, not, not as clean as it could have been, but a 2-0 nonetheless into Aichi. So ending the week with a 2-0. So that's going to wrap up this week for Lineup Academy. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much if you made it all the way to the end. If you guys did, drop a Yasuo Leona is goaded or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But I hope you guys enjoy one more video of Lineup Academy before Seasonals. So I hope these at least are giving you a little bit better of an idea of potential lineups you want to consider as well as potential lineups you can expect when playing in Seasonals. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you guys tomorrow with another video. So peace out guys and take care.